I'm still looking for my, my partner, my, my person. Courtney wrote a book a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. It came out that you maybe weren't so thrilled about the book. Was that true? That you Did you read the book? Were you not, were you not happy about the book? I was not happy about the book. Um, I didn't read the book. I, I kind of like flipped, I flipped through it. I remember I got like an advanced copy from a friend of mine. <clears throat> and, um, you know, people do things for, for different reasons. Who knows, you know, what, what she was going through at the time. Uh, we've since made amends. We're fine. Mm -hmm. We're cool. We, uh, we didn't speak for probably six years after that book came out. And then I, I reached out and... Um, we just kind of extended the olive branch, you know. Well, that's nice. I think she has a baby now. Did you talk she about does. that? She does. She does. She talks to my sister a lot still. They're still very, quite friendly. Um, I think she is happy living in Scottsdale. At least it, at least it looks that way. And, you know, Courtney was always a, a really nice person um, deep down. She got a pretty raw deal with the, with the edit. Yeah. Um, wow, I love to hear that. I wasn't expecting to hear Courtney and Ben made amends. That made my day. Yeah, you know, just we're old. That's, that's the point. <laughs> totally. No, I know. It's just so interesting. Um, I mean, she obviously wrote a book. Bachelor people write a book all the time. You wrote a children's book. Would you ever want to go down that memoir path or just not worth opening up all that potential drama again? Um, I'd be open to it, honestly. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who would actually read it or and or care. Um, but I've got some pretty, pretty crazy stories from from that time in my life um, that yeah. would be, I think it would be interesting to put down pen to paper. Um, I don't think I have the bandwidth and or skill to write something like that. I know that most of these people probably get ghost writers. Yeah. Or something, right? Yeah. I can uh, be your ghost writer, Ben. Yeah. Oh, are you a writer? <laughs> I mean, I write for Us Weekly. Close enough. Oh, enough. <laughs> close enough. So tell me about Frequent Flyers. What inspired you to write a children's book and all about it? A number of years ago, I kind of like came up with the the concept frequent flyers um it's about this little trio of flies that live at the airport and they board commercial flights for international destinations teach kids about um, acceptance of other cultures and um, not being afraid of, of airplanes and travel and they get into some shenanigans along the way uh, i just thought it was like a pretty pretty cute idea and um, i really liked the name so i trademarked it and, uh, and my sister had a baby josephine and um, i figured this would be like kind of like a nice little nice little gift to her so I spent um, the vast majority of COVID in like inner circles with my my close friends and their and their kids, and um, pulled a lot of character traits out of like my niece and some of my other friends' kids and things like that. So it was a it was a COVID project. A COVID project. Where are some of the places explored? I know Paris is one, right? Paris is one. The um, second book is actually I already finished it. It's uh, it's New York. Um, mm -hmm. Not so international for us, but maybe for others. And yes. um, I haven't thought about number three yet. I just recently started a, a new job, so I'm um, kind of busy. I don't know. I don't know when volume three will be coming out. <laughs> it probably won't be anytime soon. Um, but it's been fun. It's been a fun little kind of creative outlet and project, and been received well. And so hopefully, it uh, I don't know keeps selling books. Did anything surprise you that was maybe harder than you thought about writing a children's book? Yeah, I think the hardest part about it is um, less is more is probably the, the right way to say it. Uh, it you you want to write and write and write, but kids don't want tons of words. So <laughs> Fair. Um, strike, striking that balance was, was difficult. And, I, you know, I'll be the first to admit, I think the first one is probably a little lengthy. The second one is, I'm, I'm like finding my feet. The second one is, is a little bit shorter, um, still accomplishes the same goal. Uh, and so the, the reading level for this is probably, you know, five and up. Okay. Yeah. You know, you mentioned your niece, you're writing children's book. Do you have baby fever or is this your outlet maybe for, for kids? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a really good question. I, um, I, I think, I think I want kids. I'm still, I'm still looking for my, my partner, my, my person. Um, so I won't really know until I get there. We can start. We can start with that. Yeah, you know, I I, I I watch my friends with kids, and my especially my sister and brother-in-law, and, and the love and, and happiness it brings to them. So it would be kind of a shame to miss out on that. I think. What are the qualities you're looking for in a partner? Are you on? Are you on the apps? Are you? How are we doing this, Ben? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, I I kind of like sporadically go on Hinge every once in a while. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose I'm on the apps. Um. I, I'm, I live in Sonoma now, which is a very small town, and um, that makes dating fairly difficult. 
<laughs> plus, Fair. plus it's a small town and like I did a, that television show and it's like if I go on a bunch of first dates in the town of Sonoma then everyone probably just assumes I'm like back being the bachelor which is not the case uh -huh. um, so I have to be very careful <laughs> careful about um, dating in Sonoma <laughs>